we'll move on to the meeting of the Cunningham Town Board for Monday, August 9th, 2021. Will the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Wu? Here. Mr. Evans? Here. Ms. Hersey? Here. Ms. Colasetti? Ms. Bishop? Here. Ms. Wilkins? Here. Mr. Quisenberry? Here. Mayor Marlin? Here. Ms. Chenoweth? Yes. Here. Mr. Williams? Here. All right, next item is approval of the minutes from June 28th, 2021. And this includes the public hearing on June 28th and the regular meeting for Monday, June 28th. Could we have a motion for approval? I move to approve the minutes of Monday, June 28th, 2021. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved by Charisse, seconded by Grace. Any corrections? All right. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. That motion passes. Are there any additions to the agenda? All right. At this point, or uh, Danielle, did you want to uh, pull your item off? Yes. Yeah, so uh, if you look under new business, uh, uh, budget, which is actually for the fiscal year that just ended. The reason it's here is because there were so many changes under COVID that we actually had to bring it back before you officially. Uh, we received input from our accountants uh, today. There's a few adjustments that uh, she would like to make before it's ready for an audit. So I'm gonna ask that uh, 8B essentially be tabled or removed from the agenda until the next month. Okay, could I get a motion to remove item 8B from the agenda? I'll move that we move ordinance number T 2021-08002, ordinance approving 2020 and 2021 Cunningham Township budget to the next scheduled meeting. Okay. I'll second. Moved by Mary Alice, seconded by Chris. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, that will be on the agenda for next month. All right, next item on the agenda is public participation. I have one card at this point, and it's Katie Muir. Please come forward, state your name, and then uh, turn on the microphone so that there's a green light if it's not already on. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Katie Muir and I am one of the long-term tenants who was informed by a supervisor Chattowitz May 7th dear tenants letter that I would need to vacate my apartment no later than August 15th, 2021 as a result of an intergovernmental agreement between Cunningham Township and Urbana School District number 116 approved by the Urbana City Council on February 8th, 2021 via resolution T2021 02001R. On July 6, 2021, Supervisor Chattowith submitted her application for a special use permit to allow an emergency shelter at 206 and 208 East California Avenue to house families with students that attend Abana School District number 116 as well as individuals with disabilities awaiting approval for SSI. On July 30th, 2021, Catherine Trotter, Urbana Plan Commission issued her memorandum regarding plan case 2427, SU21 for a special use permit to allow an emergency shelter at 206 and 208 East California Avenue that includes the following language, quote, the use is simply a change from apartment housing to emergency housing, which differ mostly by the length of stay for residents. Supervisor Chanowitz's memo, dated August 4th, 2021, uploaded online for tonight's meeting under reports of officers, includes the following language, quote, see you at home remains closed and has announced a policy of not allowing anyone who has alcohol or drugs, including cannabis in their system. We met with CU at home to express our concerns that no one we serve 
will be able to stay at the shelter. During a Cunningham Township meeting a few months ago, Supervisor Chatterwith informed the town board trustees that she found it necessary to install surveillance cameras at the township office as a result of the unruly and destructive behavior exhibited by some of the individual individuals her agency serves that she stated occurred during regular daytime office hours. During a special use permit public hearing convened on August 5th, very brief mention was made of the written public comments the owner of Vine Street Motors, Tony Black, submitted for the public hearing addressing his concerns regarding safety and the homeowners who live directly across the street from 206 and 208 East California expressed their concerns regarding the safety with one of the homeowners requiring in regards to the age of the students that would be housed in the emergency shelter. Supervisor Chanowitz chose not to address the concerns expressed regarding safety during the special use permit public hearing except to say that it is illegal to discriminate against families with children in spite of the fact that she has found it necessary to install surveillance cameras in the township office to protect her staff and volunteers from some of the individuals her agency serves. For reasons unknown, the Regional Office of Education for Champaign and Four Counties ended its emergency shelter program in 2019 resulting in Supervisor Chanowitz's decision to begin housing families with students who attend Urbana School District number 116 at the Roadway Inn in Urbana using private dollars from the angel fund she created. On July 9, 2021, a homeless man was arrested at the Urbana Roadway Inn for allegedly lighting a fire inside a room, quote, because he has enemies, unquote, as reported by the News Gazette. Also on July 9, 2021, a teenager was arrested at the apartment complex known as The Castle, located at 1806 South Cottage Grove Avenue, being one of two teenagers arrested, age 18 and 16 years old, for shooting that occurred in Rantoul on the 4th of July, in which a 15-year-old and a 7-year-old were shot, and three other victims were grazed in the gunfire. Yesterday at 4.41 p.m. in the afternoon, a 22-year-old man was shot several times in an apartment in the apartment complex known as The Castle, located at 1806 South Cottage Grove Avenue. Urbana police detained a 21-year-old Urbana male and a 15-year-old Urbana male juvenile from inside one of the two apartments associated with the shooting. After conducting a search, police recovered three pistols, a large amount of cannabis from one apartment, and a sawed-off shotgun and ammunition from the other apartment. The 15-year-old was arrested for aggravated battery with a firearm, possession with the intent to deliver cannabis, unlawful use of weapons, and armed robbery. The children arrested for these gun-related crimes live within the boundaries of the Urbana School District number 116. It is simply not realistic to think the only difference in the change from apartment housing to emergency housing is the length of stay for residents. It is well known that individuals transitioning from homelessness are faced with overcoming trauma, substance abuse, psychological or emotional problems, and or financial distress, all of which can result in unpredictable behavior. Supervisor Chanowith has repeatedly stated that the families housed at the emergency shelter will be carefully screened before being approved to move into the emergency shelter at 206 and 208 East California Avenue if the special use permit is approved by the Urbana City Council on August 16th. I'm sure Green Street Realty, who owns the apartment complex known as The Castle, located at 1806 South Cottage Grove Avenue, screens tenants during their application process. Therefore, the question becomes, will Cunningham Township follow the lead of CU at home 
and screen families for alcohol and drug abuse before authorizing them to stay at the emergency shelter at 206 and 208 East California Avenue and take additional steps to ensure the safety of residents and businesses in the surrounding community. And a point you might want to consider is these children, shooters, their families will be evicted from the castle and they might very well go to Cunningham Township and ask for housing. And you won't know who they are because it's a juvenile and you can't release their name. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to address the Cunningham Town Board? I have, a, I have something to read from Alan Axelrod. Okay, go ahead. Good evening, Sharice. If you could please read this comment during public comment section of the Township Board meeting. A graphic recently circulated gave the impression to those who didn't read the small text that one would be adopting an increasing number of bedrooms if they donated to the township donor fund. However, upon closer inspection, one reads that it is for subsidizing the cost of the building which the township has purchased. There is nothing wrong with that subsidy, but as there has been quite a lot of contention between former tenants of the building and the township supervisor, Danielle Chenoweth, it would be a point of concern when continued amb ambiguities that documentedly mislead members of the public occur. There are additional concerns, but this is of the contemporary variety and typable <laughs> in the time that I have tonight. As a reminder, the Township Board is a sub uh, supervisory ro role to the Township Supervisor as confusing as it may be, as, yeah, I think it's supposed to be, as it may be, the, uh, it is your duty to ask thoughtful questions to protect the integrity of the office's mission, the rights of the interns and staff, as well as the dignity of the, the participants. Stay safe, Alan. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to address the Cunningham Town Board? Okay. Seeing no one else, we'll move on to the committee to verify bills, uh, town fund and GA fund. Danielle. Sure. Good evening. So, just pulling up the supervisor. So, in the town fund this last month, we had twenty-six thousand nine hundred and fifty-seven dollars and forty-two cents in expenditures. In the general assistance fund, we had eighty-two thousand four hundred and thirty-eight dollars and six cents. That totals $109,395.48. Um, and I just wanted to, actually I'll hold my comments until we get to the reports of officers. I'm happy to answer any questions you have about the town bills. Mary Alice? <laughs> I did you know I was gonna raise my hand. Uh, I, I had a quick question and I don't have the bills in front of me. I just had them two seconds ago. There is a, a, a cost for a sign and I'm wondering if Township now has electronic signage. Oh, we've had elect. No, you're you're referring to Hello Sign. Yes, yes, yes. Hello Thank Sign you. is a way to sign documents online. Okay, and All we right. implemented it months ago with COVID. It's a monthly fee. That's fine. I just I just wanted to know what signs we were doing. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions for Danielle? Charisse? I don't know if this is relevant, but I, I guess I would like some more information regarding what Alan wrote. Uh, so, so essentially, I don't know, I have not seen that communication. I have no idea what he's referring to. So as you know, because you're a town board member and you can respond to him and anyone else who is misinformed that essentially the property is 100% funded by the township and all of the private donations that we collect directly go to meet the material needs of residents, which I have said every month for the last, you know, 36 months. So it's simply false. So I haven't seen the graphic he's referring to. If you could forward me the comment, you're welcome to, but it sounds like he just is inaccurate, has inaccurate information. 
Okay. Um, and I guess what I would ask too is to see the graphic because I don't know what I don't have a clue either of what he's talking about. So I just thought maybe you would know. If you look on our Facebook page, it's my guess that he's referring to our request for furniture items. Um, and if people would like to get money, we can purchase things like new mattresses because we're not taking used mattresses. So essentially there's two requests for folks who want to donate furniture items. They contact us. We have a volunteer, uh, Carol Inskeep, who we appreciate very much. She's a super volunteer and she's actually vetting the materials so that we can furnish the six apartments. So the, the furnishings are 100% through donations. That allows us to keep our township dollars to support people with their move out assistance, general assistance and other items. So we've been very clear from the beginning and consistent that all uh, donations that come into the township through the angel donor fender 100% basically purchasing things on behalf of participants to meet their material needs. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on the town fund or GA fund? Could I have a motion to place the, uh, to approve these? I move to approve the um, town fund and general assistance fund bills. <clears throat> Is there a second? Yeah. Moved by Chandra, seconded by James. Further discussion? Uh, do we need a roll call on this, Fred? No. Okay, could I have a voice vote? All those in favor of approval of the town fund and general assistance fund, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. That motion passes. Uh, reports of officers. Okay, so essentially I have quite quite a bit. I'll try to be brief, but the supervisor's memo covers this. Uh, our general assistance participants are down to 85. This is really good news. It's partly because there's a lot of jobs that are available. We also see a lot of folks getting general, excuse me, getting disability assistance, uh, SSI and SSDI. So essentially uh, we are moving in the right direction. Uh, 25 are homeless. That's down from 33, partly because we housed a number of people in this last month. You'll see 20 rental assistance uh, items, and many of those were homeless move-ins. Um, but we also did a survey of our homeless participants, and some of them have addresses in Urbana, so we were able to convert them essentially to um, receiving their checks by mail. Uh, rental assistance, this is probably the largest month that we've had. We have 20 rental assistance um, uh, participants or households from this last month. Part of it is that we were clearing off all the rental assistance before, like we, we basically were finishing up our piece and then now we're referring people to Regional Plan Commission. Uh, we do continue to do rental assistance for two categories of people. Folks who do not certify that they are COVID impacted in any way. It's hard to find people who would say that because we've all been impacted in various ways. Uh, and the second is for folks who are moving in, uh, usually they're homeless or near homeless and they're moving into a place and we provide that move in assistance. Um, eviction tracking and prevention. So I'm uh, very pleased to, uh, to announce that we have an eviction tracking and prevention initiative. This is a new initiative to reduce the number of evictions in Urbana. It involves advocacy for residents threatened with legal or illegal evictions. So I linked to a New York Times piece for you so that you could see the 12% of Champaign County, that's the county, residents are behind on rent and they owe an average of 33.70. That's um, due to that research model. That's actually better than the surrounding counties. It's still not great. We don't want to see 12% of our residents evicted, but um, for example, the Bronx, where my friend lives, she's at 26% in her community. So just to give you a perspective. Um, on August 3rd, the CDC issued a new order temporarily halting evictions through November 3rd in counties with heightened levels of COVID. I have confirmed with Julie Pride that we are included in that. Um, that said, to be covered, tenants must submit a declaration form to their landlord to be protected and they can get that declaration form on the CDC website. So we do see evictions happening for non-covered persons 
Uh, there were 14 evictions filed in the first three days of August, according to Judge Olmstead. Those evictions will not be processed until after the Supreme Court deadline. Um, but it does mean that they're in the court system and that's starting. And we did see evictions of families and households from June 25th until about the middle of July. We saw evictions processing before the Supreme Court stepped in. Um, so we have started to attend eviction court. Uh, we're going to be there every Monday. We have flyers that we've worked on with RPC and City of Champaign Township. We deliver those flyers to folks uh, in eviction court so we can help them. And Judge Olmstead has actually given us a little room next to eviction court where we can invite folks, if they want, to come and actually fill out the application for move-in assistance right then and there. Um, we are, uh, we just, and this is new as of since I wrote the supervisor's memo, we'll be partnering with RPC and the city of Champaign Township to do bus ads on 99 buses throughout Champaign County about emergency rental assistance. So I'm very pleased each of those entities will pitch in dollars and we've agreed to a common graphic. Um, let's see, uh, eviction records between March 20 and March 2022 will be sealed automatically. Unsealing will be allowed only when there's a judgment issued. <clears throat> you may have seen WCIA has helped us give earned media on this issue. <clears throat> so utility support, I just wanna point out that about half of all utility support that we have done has been in the last three weeks. So this is, we're receiving a lot of phone calls with requests for utility support. And we put out a call today, actually asking people to donate to that fund to help replenish it. 41% of folks who we have helped apply for subsidized housing have actually gotten into subsidized housing. So. Yes, applause here. So of the 133 or 31 general assistance participants representing 90 households, 37 of those households have gotten in. That's huge. And we are systematically working to end homelessness in our community. Emergency housing. We have served, as of the date of this uh, memo, 30 households, including 32 adults and 35 children. That is since we opened that program July of 2020. As of the time of this memo, we were serving two households. Um, essentially, if we exclude transfers to another emergency shelter, our typical stay is about two months. Um, we held a, a neighborhood meeting. We had about 40 people uh, show up to our neighborhood meeting. Uh, Mary Ellis Wu was there. Um, Grace Swoken was there. And then we had a you know, number of members of the public. There were city staff as well. That went very well. Um, we had a WCIA piece on it. The Planning Commission voted unanimously to recommend approval of our special use permit. And you should see that with your city council hat on next week. We launched an adopt an apartment program. You can look on and see our wish list. We are currently installing washable hard flooring throughout the units. Um, and yes, see you at home remains closed, but should be opening on the 15th. Uh, we are still in the process of negotiating with them around their intake process. Mm -hmm. Just to be clear, see you at home supports single individuals only, not families. It's a different constituency than our emergency shelter program. Our, and lastly, our Bridge to Home program is a rapid rehousing program. Uh, it's fiscally sponsored by the city of Urbana who helped to uh, navigate that system with the state. We do up to 12 months of rent for literally homeless families. They have to be referred by centralized intake for the homeless. Last month, we served three households and we moved our first household into housing. So we're very excited about that program. Um, and I think I will leave it there and open up for any questions you all may have. Mary Alice. Yeah, I was hoping that you could expand upon um, exactly what the Bridge to Home uh, program is. You talk about it being rapid rehousing program. If you could just give us a bit more detail. Absolutely. So essentially Bridge to Home was proposed 
as a result of, so we're part of the continuum service providers to the homeless, which includes the city, the township, the cities, the townships, the, the county, and a number of homeless service providers. And for the last three years, we have convened as a group to say we don't have en enough agencies applying for emergency solutions grants from our county. And we're missing out on dollars that could be coming to our county that aren't. So um, those, those emergency solution grant dollars increased significantly under COVID. And we were approached by the continuum of service providers of the homeless to see if we would be willing to receive those dollars. We could not directly receive them because we don't have a relationship with the state yet. So even though we are GATA compliant, we have all our audits in, they were only servicing uh, organizations that had received ESG the year before. So essentially we approached the city of Urbana, they agreed to fiscally sponsor us. And what that program does is it provides 12, up to 12 months of rent for folks who are literally homeless, registered through centralized intake, who are referred to our program based on criteria. It's for anyone in the county who is referred to us and RPC does the referrals and as long as it matches our criteria, essentially, we help them move into housing. Um, and in some cases, we've essentially our emergency, the families that stay in emergency housing may be re-referred back to us, but so far that hasn't happened. I mean, it could happen, but essentially we just take whoever the county sends to us based on our parameters. So far, it's been a number of single individuals, and many of them have been homeless for a long time, and they're kind of at the top of the list to be referred. The person that we just recently housed is in his 40s, and he has been homeless since he was 13 years old. So that gives you a sense of the types of folks that we're supporting. Thank you. Any other questions? Grace. Thank you. Um, Thanks for this great report and the work you guys are doing. It's great goals to end homelessness in our community, and I hope that we can see that as a reality. It's totally doable. <laughs> it's totally possible for us to do that. Awesome. Um, I was wondering if you could just speak a little bit on some of the challenges to permanent housing and um, the increase in vouchers coming in the future. Yeah. So it's, um, it's very exciting that that housing authority during COVID got 50 vouchers through what is called the C-19 program, very bureaucratic term, to be referred to the form that is used for folks who have stayed in shelter at least two weeks, then become eligible for a voucher. Um, and so we have housed, meaning we as a community have housed a lot of people um, about, probably at this point, about 40 households have been housed through the C-19 program. And we're part of a consortium of folks who meet every two weeks to help that population. Um, we recently found out that our community is receiving emergency housing vouchers through the housing authority. Um, it's because the, all of the rules haven't been published yet. My understanding is that it's for literally homeless folks and folks who are at extreme risk of homelessness who are vulnerable in certain ways. I, I don't have all the parameters. We'd have to talk to the housing authority. Essentially, um, what pe people will uh, be, the vouchers will come to the community, will be matching folks to the vouchers. But once they get a voucher, it's a housing choice voucher, and they have to essentially go out and find housing to move in. So as I, I spoke to the mayor uh, a week ago, I was very pleased. Um, that she talked about taking on discrimination in Urbana. And I think that that's, a, that we're gonna be kind of squeezed trying to get these vouchers out the door if they're also facing a d discrimination in the community. So essentially, I would say the two challenges to helping house folks with vouchers, one is staff time to actually navigate systems for folks who may have you know, traumatic brain injuries or you know, me mental health issues. Um, and we are gonna offer some of that staff time through township, and the second is taking on discrimination throughout our whole community. And I would just add, there is a bill uh, before the state house to actually make it illegal to discriminate against people who are paying with vouchers. Unfortunately, I don't think that bill is gonna 
move fast enough for it to affect our community with these vouchers, although I certainly support the bill and I've submitted my comments around it. Any other questions? Uh, okay, oh, Grace. Sorry, uh, I guess on that same line, but um, in a sense we don't really need it, right? Maybe not a question for Danielle for the town because um, we have our own non-discrimination ordinance. Right, so we don't really Correct, but it always helps one. to have statewide support as well. Thank you. Um, Wayne, did you have a report tonight? Okay. Is there any unfinished business? All right, we'll move on to new business. Uh, resolution number T2021-08-010R, which is a resolution authorizing the supervisor to sign an agreement with Pelman and Dold PC for audit services for the, that should be the fiscal year 2020 to 2021. So essentially, and I've asked Wayne to answer questions as well, the two of us have been working uh, to secure an auditor for this next year. As you know, CLA has been our auditor for five years. It's important to change auditors. Typically every five years is a good time frame. Uh, we ended up asking a number of auditors in the community, as public health can tell you and many other government agencies, uh, you can send RFP out to 10 people and you only get two or three responses because auditors are very busy um, right now. I don't know why, but it seems like auditors are a premium. So in this case, uh, the best, we had two proposals come back um, it, from, and th this one was the most affordable, it was the most complete, and we're recommending that we go for it with Pelman and Dold PC for audit services for last fiscal year. And again, we're happy to, we are happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions on this item? James. Yeah, I was wondering, did you have any recommendations from other organizations for this particular auditor? Um, so <clears throat> when- um, Could you make sure your mic's turned on, Wayne, please? Okay, thank you. When this auditor submitted their proposal, they also submitted letters of reference that we checked. And there are at least one township, there are a couple of school districts. Okay, could I have a motion, please? I move to approve resolution number T 2021 08 010R, resolution authorizing the supervisor to sign an agreement with Pelman and Dole PC for audit services for fiscal year 2021 20, 2020 2021. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Moved by Sharice, seconded, or moved by Chandra, seconded by Sharice. Further discussion? I just want to add that um, typically our audits in the past with CLA, we've always had a ding against us in internal control because they also help us with bookkeeping support. They're going to continue to help us with bookkeeping support, so this will actually remove a ding against us. Okay, thank you. Um, do we need a vote? Roll call? Yes, do a roll call. Okay. Ms. Wu? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Ms. Hersey? Yes. Mr. Quisenberry? Yes. Ms. Wilkin? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. That motion passes. And again, as we noted, the second item there under new business will be considered on next month's agenda. And with no further business before the Cunningham Town Board, we stand adjourned. Thank you.